What's up everybody, Shane here from Figadec 3D Printing, and today I'm finally going to give you my review of the WeDo Tina 2S. Welcome back. So yes, I've had this printer for quite a while now, and I just haven't done a review on it because I just haven't gotten around to it. I really wanted to because honestly, for a little machine, it works quite well. I have several failed prints here, and I'll kind of get to why those were, at least what I experienced them being, but then kind of once I got through it, life was pretty good. So let's kind of talk about the machine first, and then I'll talk about my, ex my experiences of printing with it. So this is a tiny, tiny printer. Uh, I've got the spec sheet here just so I don't misquote anything. Uh, it's a 100 millimeters by 105 by 100 millimeter build volume. It is a very, very small package. The build volume is a little bit smaller than what is in my Volron V0, which is a 120 cube for that. This is basically 100 cube with five extra on the X, but it's a pretty small build volume and it's really meant for kids or for less like first 3D printers. So again, it's meant to be small and fairly safe. Uh, the heated bed gets up to 60 degrees centigrade and the hot end, it says it goes up to 245 degrees centigrade. It says it can print up to 200 millimeters a second. That I did not, definitely was not true. You can print either via the card or you can print via Wi-Fi, which actually works seamlessly. You do have to use their slicer though. Um, I did not really find a way. I didn't dig too deep into how to get this to work well with Proof Slicer. I'm sure I could by using the card, but I didn't really figure out how to get it working with Proof Slicer. Maybe another time I could try and do that, but that would be really nice if it could, but it doesn't. The board is located just here in the top. So you can kind of see everything in there. Uh, it's a single stepper for everything. So it runs with TMC 2208 drivers, which makes it pretty quiet, not as quiet as 2209s. Uh, it's still using end stops because it's 08s, 09s are running sensorless homing. I don't remember what 8s do. Uh, anyways, uh, it also has LEDs, which is really nice. So it really illuminates the print area as it's printing. So that's really nice to see as well. And it comes with a flexible build sheet. Um, spring steel so it's easy to take things off and it has like a build tack type surface on it things hold on to it uh, pretty good honestly I can't really complain about that and the biggest thing this thing has is auto bed leveling now is it really necessary for such a small printer no but is it nice that it has it for the price absolutely because it literally only cost me like two dollars to add it to a 3d printer it probably cost them pennies to add it to here so i was very happy to see them add that because again they're going for a kind of send it and forget about it type of printing experience once everything's set up just hit print and it'll auto bed level everything is good so i think it does pretty good at that because there are no adjustments for the bed it's just what the bed is it's hard mounted which is the way it should be for auto bed leveling as long as they are perpendicular from each other then it should be a good printing experience, which so far it has. And it's using three point auto bed leveling. Again, that's kind of what you need. That's the, the mesh that it's making is those three points. It works well. I can't really say anything other uh, from that. So it does have this Polo Print app. It was the same thing that we do had for the X40. Didn't find it very useful. So I'm just using WeBuilder off of my computer. Um, it runs with Kira and OctoPrint. I don't use Kira and I don't understand how it's supposed to work with OctoPrint. So unless you're supposed to be able to install something, I don't really know. Uh, so it does come with this unpacking guide, which is a little guide on how to get everything running. So it comes in multiple languages, which was very easy to follow. It also came with this really good, honestly, troubleshooting booklet, um, front and back basically of all these different things that could go wrong and what to do. So really, again, really helps you as a beginner understand, hey, it told me X homing failed. Okay, what causes that? Well, there's three different causes here. How do I troubleshoot? There's troubleshooting steps, solutions. Here are the solutions to go through. Not too bad at all. Um, it does come with a two year guarantee, which a lot of the companies come with guarantees, things like that, but they're pretty much just trash. There are certain things that are good for 60 days, motor wiles, end stop. Other things are for six months. The motherboard and external power supply motor bearings are guaranteed for two years. We provide free replacement service, except human damage. Um, exclude from the warranties, the platform sticker 
and filament tube. So I don't know what the sticker, I'm guessing that's the, um, the bed itself. If you dig your nozzle into it, that's kind of on you, which it is. And then the PTFE tube here. So this is a Bowden printer. It is not direct drive. And again, this is not for printing fast. This is not for printing. It does print fairly detailed, but it's definitely not for that. This is for kids. And I'm going to go over the reasons why that is. All right. So why is this really made for kids? It's fairly safe. The over temp uh, protection works. So I disconnected the thermistor. It triggered. It has this mesh here on the front of the hot end and it comes down almost to where the nozzle is. So when this is printing, it is basically impossible from the front or the back to get to the hot end while it's printing. That's pretty crucial because you have things like the, the Prusa Mini, a little bit bigger than this guy, but completely open air. So you can touch the nozzle, you can get in there, your hands get in there. Again, you should be careful with your kids around 3D printers anyways. They're not toys, they are tools, but they are doing what they can to make it safer. I like that, I think it works well. They are using this like super generic MK8 Bowden extruder made out of injection molded plastic. It works, these definitely do wear out over time, so keep that in mind. It does have this little <laughs> spool holder on the side, which is so cute and fits nothing except for their own little tiny spool. Uh, there are 200 gram spools that you can buy online from companies like, uh, was that one of the like Geek something or, or, there's a few out there. They're mostly trash filament. So you're gonna need something to be able to print this with. So I found a remix of the, it's not the Kush ones. It is, this is the Prusa mini um, spool holders that someone just carved down to be able to fit diagonally on this printer. So these were printed on this printer, which is great. And I used the beginner filament that came with, this, with, came with the printer to print these. Also great. Do I still have that spool? I do actually, here it is. So I do still have the little tiny spool here. Uh, again, it fits on there great for what it is, but anything other than that, you're gonna need to print something. So you're gonna need to print your own spool holder eventually. I would do that probably in the beginning with this initial spool. There's a bunch on printables and on Thingiverse that you can do lots of different ways. I just went with this route because I can just set it beside and set my spool anywhere. The power supply here, it comes with, this is basically like an LED power supply. Uh, it's got the little power switch on here. There's no power switch on the actual machine. It's probably like 60 watts if that. Yeah, it's five amp, 60 watt, 12 volt power supply. So very simple. And we talked about the spool holder that you've got the screen up top, not touchscreen. Uh, it's a little slow at times. Uh, definitely not a super powerful machine, uh, but it, sometimes it just takes a second to, to load things. But once it's going, I didn't really have an issue with it. Uh, and then on the side, you have your power and you have your USB connectivity if you want to hook it up to your computer. So yeah, that's the, the gist of it. Again, it does run pretty quiet. Yeah, so the last other things that come in the box is it does come with a stick of glue, which I have not used at all yet. I haven't needed it. Everything sticks pretty well to the build plate once it's heated up. Uh, it comes with an extra nozzle, which is really nice because the nozzle is different than a standard like E3D or an MK8 nozzle. It does at least come with one extra nozzle. It comes with a nozzle wrench and with an assortment of Allen wrenches, which I didn't need a single one for this because the whole thing is already built. So, I mean, if you had to take something apart, they give you the tools for it, but super not necessary. It does come with a uh, USB cable, again, didn't need it because once I did my first few prints on the SD card, I printed exclusively via Wi-Fi and it worked great. It takes, you know, a couple seconds for it to receive the file. It's definitely not as fast as doing it through a uh, push slicer going to one of my clipper machines, but being able to slice and just send it to the machine and let it go is so amazing in my opinion. I think is a huge feature that is overlooked by so many printers. Would I like that this be easier to hook up via push slicer? Absolutely. Will I take it using a different slicer-ish? I'm like 50-50 on that. I like Proof Slicer. All my printers are in there. It works great. We Builder is a little clunky. It takes a little long to slice, kind of like Cura. So I would call it a Cura equivalent, pretty much. Uh, the features of it are not a lot of, but again, does it work? Yes. Let's talk about print quality. Let me get my other uh, camera here. So I started out with just the white filament. I did just a simple cube which again, came out great. Just wanna make sure that everything was working properly. Easy day. I did a Flexi Fossil Fish 
That's uh, a lot to say there. The only issue was I was a little far from the bed. Uh, I believe this printed with a draft, uh, but other than that, it printed very well. I then did a Pikachu just in their filament. And again, the quality is very good. No, no signs of ringing anywhere. Uh, there's one like under extrusion blip here. I didn't notice in any other print. It was just this one here that that happened, but otherwise it worked very well. And then I did this dragon, which I believe was on the uh, SD card. So I went ahead and did it. It did have a raft against so the bottom. You kind of get that little bit of roughness to it. But otherwise, this is like a 0.1 millimeter layer height. Incredibly smooth and just feels great and looks extremely good. So then I started to slice my own things. And here I have Angus's uh, torture tower castle thing. And as you can see, I had a pretty gnarly layer shift on this pretty early on, but it recovered uh, because I went away. Uh, so obviously pretty much every bit of this failed. And that was because I tried upping the speed. I wanted to see if I could get it really to speed up. And so I had this, as you said, you know what? Let me take a break and let me try uh, a different model. Maybe this was too complicated. So then I tried doing the toy boat and uh, this one super under extruded my temperature ended up being, it looks like it had a clog. It was just too low of temperature. I tried putting it like 200 or 205. Um, that didn't work. So I put those aside and I went ahead and then printed out another boat successfully. So I raised my temperature up quite a bit. I had one under extrusion line that kind of goes through it. And I'm probably gonna blame the film. This is an extremely old spool. Literally the spool is probably a good four to five years old that I've had sitting around, I wanted to use it up. That was the only issue. Other than that, the print looks great. So then I moved on and I printed this AA battery milk crate, which looks absolutely phenomenal. The overhangs on this came out very, very nicely. You know, very little droopage there. There are some decent overhangs for such a small printer. This is a good portion of the build plate, honestly. Um, zero stringing, it just, it really did print this well, and I'm very impressed with this print. I uh, then printed another small, it's like the Prusa whistle, uh, I don't know, it's a, or not, it's not the Prusa whistle, but it's just a super loud whistle um, that works quite well. It gets very loud, I won't blow on it too bad. So those all worked well. Then I loaded up some protopasta filament, and here I have the castle, and it works. Uh, everything that's supposed to come out. This is like a maze thing here. Um, and if I can figure it out real quick. Uh, anyways, it um, the castle all works uh, as expected, the way it should. So his tolerance castle is really great. And I'm glad that I was able to get this printer to print it because I definitely had some that weren't able to. Um, so yeah, that worked out well. And then I just did a little tiny ring because a little cat ring, why not? just things that I was doing. And obviously you saw earlier, I printed the uh, spool holder, the skin. This is a modified version of the Prusa mini spool holder because it has where you can put the bar in. They just kind of carved off the front here so you can see the bearings. And this is what I'm using to print with a full kilogram spool on this printer. So yeah, that's the WeDo Tina 2 S. So again, it's the 2S because I need my phone. So I'm double checking uh, Amazon real quick. So you can get this on Amazon for $199 for the Tina 2S. For the Tina 2, the basic version, it is $159. I think, so the basic version, it does, it does have auto bed loving, does not have Wi-Fi. Uh, there's something else that's different about it. The plate's the same. I don't think it has silent steppers. It's a very similar machine, but uh, again, so this one is the 2S for $200 on Amazon. Um, how do I feel about $200? So yes, it is small compared to like an Ender 3. Uh, Ender 3, oh, they might have auto bed leveling these days. I'm not sure. I think it's not bad. I think if it was maybe like 160, it would be a better value. But again, getting this for some younger ones to use, I would be 100% okay letting my 10 year old use this as she now knows how to slice, at least using Prusa Slicer. She's done some modeling. We just did a project for school not long ago. I'd be comfortable with putting this next to the computer in the family area and letting them be able to print with this. I would feel safe with them doing that and not hurting themselves. And I don't think that it could hurt them either. So that's my opinion on it. 200 bucks, it's your money. You let me know if you think it's worth it or not because it's different for everybody. So yeah, that is the WeDo Tina 
S 3D printer. Again, a very small, very kid-friendly uh, 3D printer. Let me know what you guys think about down below. Have you have this? Would you think about buying it? Do you think it's overpriced? Uh, again, we're kind of at the bottom of the barrel now when we get to printers. There's very few that are less than about $160, $180. There's not many below there that are like not kits. And under three, you got to put together for however much that is these days. Literally, this came out of the box and I was printing with it. I can't really argue with that because being able to do that for people who are not very tech savvy and not willing to build a 3D printer, it might be a decent option because again, any little knickknack that you're gonna wanna print probably is going to fit on this, at least for your first printer, your first endeavors, letting kids do things. So thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like button. Leave some comments down below what you think about the printer. Again, if you have it, I'd love to hear from you and what you've thought about it, or if you were thinking about getting one, also love to hear about it. There'll be links below down for this printer. I'll put Amazon or wherever else I can find shops for it. Uh, full disclosure, this was sent to me by WeDo like forever ago, and uh, they didn't pay me for any of this, obviously, because I should have did this months ago, but hey, the video is out now. And these are my thoughts uh, at no, uh, they don't get to look at or anything like that. I'm just recording this and I'll throw it up on the internet and let them see it too. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there's some links down below. Buy this printer with those affiliate links or any other ones down there. Support the channel any way you see fit. If you're just subscribed and you just watched the video or you just watched the video, you're awesome. I thank you very much. Hope you all have a good day. Happy printing and I'll see you all next time.